Hello, everyone. Uh, happy Monday. Welcome to today's FPA virtual lounge. We're featuring Carlton's Law and Legal Studies um, program. My name is Stanley Philippe. I, I got to share with you all uh, this weekend. I, I binge watch uh, this show on HBO called The Undoing. Uh, really a phenomenal show, and there's a lot of legalities that get played out uh, throughout the uh, the series. And uh, and it makes me think of, of course, today's episode, not episode, but today's session and the ability to understand a lot, to explore the law, but also see uh, the way that our location, our university kind of has its own unique take on the law will be really uh, important uh, for all of you. I hope you get um, that and more from today's session. We're going to get a chance to chat with uh, two awesome folks, uh, a professor and a student, uh, both uh, connected to our, our law department. But we also want to get a chance to hear from you. You know, you're here this evening because you have a lot of thoughts. You are uh, have a, probably have a lot of questions and we want to really try to answer those questions for you. And so if you do have a question you want to share, please utilize today's live event Q&A to do just that to share those questions. And what we'll do is we'll answer as many as we can uh, throughout the live portion um, of our event. OK, uh, enough from me. Uh, it's time to bring on screen uh, our first uh, awesome guest. Uh, his name is Steve Tassin. He is a professor in the Department of Law and Legal Studies, and he's going to give you some uh, cool information you're not going to miss out on. So uh, Steve, you'll be on screen uh, very, very soon. Have fun. All right, hi, everybody. Hope everyone's well. Uh, so I'm just going to talk uh, for a few minutes about, I guess, um, the program a little bit in general, and I give you some tips, I suppose, about how how you can approach the law program, and and you know some tips about generally what you can do in the first year of the program to to be successful in the long term, I suppose. Um, so the first thing I wanted to say was just to say, I, normally I actually teach the I do teach uh, multiple sections of the first year um, program. So I teach, um, I, again, some of you may have already researched this, but I teach uh, our Laws 1001 and our Laws 1002 courses. I also teach a, um, a first year seminar in the law program, which is uh, a fairly rare actually within the Faculty of Public Affairs. I think uh, the law program might be the only department that has a first year seminar, which again, if anyone has questions about, I'm happy to talk about that in the question period. But um, the classes are generally very uh, large to start, but we uh, and but I think um, really provide good opportunities for people to explore some of their like interests, the things that brought you to Carleton to sort of examine law in the first place. So they can be very challenging courses, but also I think really fulfilling for a lot of people. We have a lot of people that take first year law um, courses, but then end up switching majors to law because of some of the, um, you know, the areas that we cover. Um, so the only thing I guess uh, that I would say uh, generally is, I mean, I think the I think the program is obviously a good program. I mean, we are kind of a unique, not a unique program anymore, but we are uh, definitely the oldest and largest program of our kind in Canada. Um, and I think, you know, we have a very large faculty with a lot of uh, like uh, with a wide variety of expertise and a wide variety of approaches. And I think there's something basically almost anyone can find something through the program that they're interested in. So I would, you know, again, I'm happy to talk about if you have specific questions about specific areas you're interested in. I can happy to talk about that in the, the question portion. Um, I, I was asked to sort of talk a little bit about some basic uh, tips, I guess, on approaching first year generally. I don't know. I mean, uh, I'll say a few things about it. I think it's really strange, actually. I mean, the fact that we're meeting in this way is is already strange. Uh, but and I think hopefully we'll be through all this next year. If that's the plan, I guess. Um, and so I'm going to talk a little bit about some tips that I would provide if you, you know, for next year sort of coming in post pandemic times, which hopefully will be sooner rather than later. Um, you know, as I said, we are a fairly large group, you know, in the law department, but but I, I think, you know, talking to my colleagues, everyone is very 
you know, interested in 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 promoting student success through the program. We are, for the most part, most of us are very approachable, and I think open to talking to you know interested students. I mean, the fact that you're all here tonight shows that you're interested and engaged and want to be successful. So I think, you know, you should recognize that the faculty as well want you want the same thing for you, and so. One of the things that you can really do to to sort of move in the right direction is to get to know us a little bit in the first year. So um, it's always encouraging when students come up after lectures. I mean, again, this year uh, we're online, so it's a bit more difficult to do this, but it's always encouraging to have students come up and talk to us after the lectures and ask, you know, follow up questions on some of the things that we've said. And I think this can be a really important uh, step to sort of Again, again, in the first few years, just to get to know what sort of what is available and to get to know the people that are uh, bringing you some of the content, not just us in terms of faculty, but also any kind of teaching staff that's connected with the course. So TAs, um, you know, we also have a lot of really great services that are connected to the first year law courses like um, which again, some of you may be familiar with if you've done any research into uh, services on campus, but things like the peer assisted support um, study sessions are really useful for students. Anyway, there's a variety of things and getting to know those services early in the term is really important kind of first step to guarantee, you know, long term uh, success in a course. Um, and the other thing I should just say, I mean, it's particularly sort of this is particularly on my mind right now because we're actually approaching the end of term or we're in the end of term right now. Uh, you know, this is our kind of final couple of weeks of term for the courses. So I'm getting a lot of email now from from students who are who are again sort of realizing now some of the stuff that they should have really kind of done early on. So my one of the biggest tips I can say and again, you're here, so I may be sort of preaching to the choir, but uh, is to really sort of get involved early on, um, see what's available talk to um, talk to the faculty that are that are um, that are putting on your courses um, and also not just familiarize yourself with um, with us but also kind of get to know some of your peers which again I think you know I think it, there are a lot of opportunities to do that early on but getting a kind of network on campus can be really important to again sort of assure your long term success in the program because there will be weeks where you know you will you will all struggle with material or with assignments and it's really important that you have a kind of a like a cohort of um, peers that can kind of support you through that process and you can help them through that process and I mean we often don't I mean maybe maybe uh, I think some students take it seriously but we often don't uh, appreciate the kind of the amount of the amount of learning we do from our peers, right? So not just from the faculty, but also from the networks of peers in your classes. This is really important to tie into those and to feel connected to the university. I know on, you know, I don't know where, I mean, some of you may not be in Ottawa today, so uh, you don't know how terrible the weather is, but it's a horrible day today. <laughs> and I think, um, you know, it can be very hard, you know, at this time of year in particular to sort of push through, uh, you know, to get onto campus, to stay, you know, connected to your courses and having a kind of a network of people on campus, a network of uh, peers can really sort of make sure that that happens. And again, as I say, assure your long term success uh, in the course. Um, I guess, I mean, I think uh, that that would be sort of my larger tip is again just getting kind of comfortable with the university early on in the in the in the term. I, mean, I think that generally you will be overwhelmed with the amount of material that you do you come that you know is given to you in the first couple of weeks. Being able to take some time to digest that and see what sort of options you have, I think, is really important. And the last thing I'll say, because uh, uh, I think I'm probably out of time, is to say. Um, that you have uh, one thing you're all here interested in in the law program uh, for a bunch of different reasons. Now, some of you may be interested in moving after uh, an undergrad uh, program in law and moving to onto uh, law school. If that's something you're interested in, I would just say 
you know, it's important to be open to the types of material and to the types of approaches that you're going to see in our program in the first couple of years to sort of recognize how that how that sort of how you would go from here to different um, to some to for, to you know basically to either other programs in the social sciences or to law school or even into you know the workplace right through um, we have a lot of really good connections in the community are I think our program the our graduates are are very attractive to a lot of people uh, and it's partly because we take a very kind of broad critical approach to what we mean by law and and um, how it operates in our society so uh, I guess I'll, I'll leave it at that um, hopefully everyone's still awake and, uh, and I'm happy to take your questions when the time comes you know what, uh, Steve, I'm going to do, I normally would bring in Maisie at this point, but I, but there is a question that really piggybacks on what you were saying okay. uh, just now. So I, so I kind of wanted to just jump on that question, if you don't mind. The sure. question was about um, uh, outcomes. So they asked, you know, I'm not sure I want to be a lawyer, but I'm really interested in law. So should I do this degree and what other jobs can I get? So you, you kind of alluded to that, to the ability of taking this degree at different places. Uh, if you can maybe speak to some maybe examples of some local not success stories but outcomes that have come out of um, of the, the Carlton Law Program. Yeah, I mean, um, I mean, I can speak to a few of them that I'm sort of aware of. Uh, I mean, I I I, um, I think the department keeps it more of a of a tally, but just some folks that I've you know I've had the pleasure of teaching and then have gone off to do different things. I mean. I would say actually you shouldn't think about the the program if you're interested in a broad approach to law then this is actually this is the program for you really I think that um, there's so many different um, ways in which you can move through the program there's many different concentrations uh, again if you've had a chance to look at it we have like a business law concentration we have a policy concentration and we also have a um, a um, I can't remember the exact wording, but it's basically an international uh, law kind of concentration. Um, so we have a lot of people that come through the program that end up doing kind of uh, policy work is is one thing, but also do like a lot of work with uh, NGOs, a lot of work with, um, um, again, kind of, I, I, I don't know what the right terminology would be, but basically like support services in terms of things like victim services in terms of um, again kind of uh, a wide variety like a wide context of kind of uh, institutions that support and um, kind of make work essentially at the end of the day the the criminal justice system or um, or a, a other sort of um, uh, legal processes I guess uh, so we have quite a few and again as I say like a lot of a number of people have gone on from our program to um, to do a lot of interesting things like I think are again I'm, I'm probably going to get this wrong but I, <laughs> I, I there, there are a number of our graduates that have gone on to you know be uh, heads of very large NGOs um, uh, you know so in in the city for example and so they they're not the pathway through the program is is actually is what I was trying to sort of say is actually very open to you there's a lot of options a lot of different ways that you can move through it. And so I think you, if you're if you're worried that somehow the program would be too narrow for you and would be pushing you towards like professional like law school at the at the end, I think that that that's actually quite quite the opposite. So most of our graduates don't move on to uh, law school. Many of them move on to other postgraduate education in terms of um, degrees in 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 uh, like uh, graduate degrees as well. But um, but yeah, there's a lot of room, I think, um, for for many different approaches to the program. So I think that's, to, to be honest, I think that's one of our greatest assets is the the range of issues that the faculty cover. Yeah, I don't know if awesome. that helps your answer. Yeah, no, it, it definitely does. And 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 while you were answering, I kind of uh, perused the uh, the law yeah. website. And oh, good, really, good, yeah. <laughs> they have a really great layout of the career paths, you know, because yeah. I think it's a common question where, you know, people always attribute or associate, you know, studying law to becoming a lawyer. And while that certainly is a pathway or an outcome, it's not the only one. And, and it's really cool. They show, you know, health and social support, media, education. Like there's just so many different ways and places you can go uh, with this degree. Yeah.
I mean, I just say one last thing. I'll just throw in at the end. I mean, one of the things we talk about in the first year courses is about how the sort of the way in which law permeates like all kind of spaces in society, right? And what this degree allows you to do, it is allows you to sort of recognize and be able to sort of have some expertise in how how we negotiate those kind of elements within all parts of our society. I mean, law is kind of inescapable, right? So it's a, I think it's very valuable in many different uh, career paths. Yeah. Okay, well, thank you so much for that, Steve. And uh, we'll bring you back into the conversation, I'm sure, uh, before tonight yep. uh, is uh, is done. <laughs> I know that's great. That's what, that's what the students want to hear. They want to hear from uh, professors. They also want to hear from fellow students. And, you know, it's great that we're able to uh, tap into our uh, awesome kind of um, resource that is, you know, our current students because uh, they are the heartbeat of our institution. They are the ones that really uh, define our culture, our community. And uh, you're going to get a chance to hear from one uh, student uh, in a very, very uh, in, I guess, a few seconds. Uh, but before we, we pass it on to Maisie, again, I want to encourage you all to continue to ask your questions. And there have been some good questions that are popping up uh, in the Q&A. So I, I thank you all for that. And uh, and we will definitely get uh, to as many questions as we can. I'm also sharing in the Q&A uh, that Career Pathways uh, site uh, for students in law. So definitely check out that, uh, that link. OK, it's time for our kind of main event. Uh, which is, uh, again, our current student, uh, Maisie, who's in her third year in the uh, Bachelor of Arts majoring in law. And uh, Maisie's going to share a bit more about uh, her journey at, at Carleton and uh, the different kind of tips and pointers she has for, for all of you. So Maisie, uh, the uh, mic and screen are both yours. Hello everyone. Hi, my name is Maisie, as I was just introduced. Um, so I just wanted to talk a little bit about um, my experience in the law program at Carl. Possibly in first year here. So I wanted to start out with uh, why I chose the law program at Carleton. And for me, it was um, something that um, uh, Professor Tassin talked about which was the fact that the law program at Carleton is so um, wide ranging when you think about the topics that you talk about in these classes that you take. Um, and this is a huge reason why I loved um, Laws 1000. Now it's 1001 and 1002, um, as I've been told. But when I was in first year, um, I loved it so much. wanted to have um, a career in it, but not necessarily knowing a lot about it um, or what I wanted to do. So what that gave me was an opportunity to get a range of knowledge in like international law, criminal law. I learned about legal theories as well as um, legal history. So all of those things really gave me a better idea of um, a certain avenues that I could take when I got out of the program, but also more that I could learn as I went on um, in the years in my program. Um, and the other thing that I wanted to talk about was um, I wish I was transitioning from high school and for me the biggest thing was I wish I didn't put so much pressure on myself to um, know everything as I came into first year. I think that a lot of high school experience, uh, a lot of high school experiences are that whether it be the teachers at your high school or your friends or what have you, um, you feel a lot of pressure to know exactly what you want to do at university and afterwards. And I did the same thing. Um, I definitely thought that I knew exactly what I was going to do. And this made me choose Um, I did very specific things um, and I wish I would have been more open to taking a different variety of courses in the faculty because you will have the ability to take um, like let's say different electives um, within the faculty and a lot of different extracurriculars because that's what really led me to having the best experience in my second and third years when I started doing that. Um, so that's definitely one of my biggest tips and um, Professor Tassin actually talked about it but I also recommend that you talk as much as you can to your professors. I mean, obviously, if it's if you don't want to, uh, don't force yourself. 
well, but I was very scared of talking to professors in my first year. I thought they were kind of on this pedestal where you really didn't feel like it was your place to be speaking to them, but I found that I gain the most knowledge and opportunities outside of the university as well um, by talking to my professors. So really, if you want to reach out to them, don't be afraid to, even if it's not related to the class, a lot of them are very welcoming and they're more than happy to talk to you about whatever you would like. And another thing was uh, I wanted to talk about extracurriculars because I had been saying that I started getting more involved in them. And Um, I wanted to say that if there is one extracurricular that I would recommend, it would definitely be the um, Carlton Moot team. I actually didn't get to be as involved as I would have liked because I was quite introverted in the first year, but tons of my friends have been part of it. And essentially what this is, is that um, our Moot team competes against different ones at universities to do sort of what you would call like a mock trial. So you'll get a sample um, case. It's usually related to criminal law, um, but they have varied sometimes. And you'll be arguing one side or another. And I found that um, school, I learned a ton about leadership, about what it looks like to be in kind of like a court setting and learning whether or not that's something you want to do in the future. So that's definitely something that I recommend um, if at all possible and if it interests you. And then finally, I kind of wanted to talk about um, overall my experience of um, being at Carleton, but also in the Faculty of Public Affairs and why I chose it. Um, I just wanted to highlight the fact that a big reason why I came to Carleton was the fact that um, it almost feels like you're in your own closed off from the rest of the city. Everybody knows them quite well. Um, everybody feels connected despite the fact that they um, don't necessarily know each other. We're all Carleton students, so everybody feels like um, we're doing it together. <laughs> and as for the faculty, uh, I one of the biggest reasons I went into the law program at this particular faculty was because it's so multidisciplinary. Um, there's a great opportunity to have a concentration, to have a minor, to take all these sorts of different classes. You get so especially legal ones, and it definitely gives you a greater understanding of um, the opportunities you'll have um, and taking advantage of everything that you can when you're at Carleton. So that's a little bit about uh, me and my experience, but please feel free to ask any questions if you need to. And yeah, I'll hand it back over. <laughs> All <laughs> Thank right. you guys. Uh, thanks. Thanks, Maisie. And uh, there, there are a couple of questions that I want you to hop on, hop on, yeah. hop on. And uh, I should just uh, kind of clarify. I know that we've been going through a bit of uh, some technical difficulties uh, with you on, on camera, but um, mm -hmm. but you're, what you're saying is so amazing. It's really speaking to what you know students can anticipate. And so um, there was a question uh, about classes and what kind of classes do students get to take in their first year? And you, you just referenced kind of the, the versatility of the class selection process in your program. So maybe you can talk a bit more about what your first year looked like uh, both at Carleton and then in the law program. Yeah, for sure. And sorry about my, I guess my internet connection might be a little bad today. That may be why I'm cutting in and out. Um, but as for like my first year experience and the types of classes that you can take. Um, so as Professor Tassin also mentioned, um, there is And there's also the laws 1001 and 1002, which gives kind of an overview of uh, the legal program and the things you may learn in future classes that are a little bit more specific. But you also have the ability to take um, a variety of different courses. For me in first year, I took a lot of political science types of courses because um, us being in Ottawa, I'm very interested in politics um, and the government system and everything. So that was something that was important to me, but you can do a wide range of things. Um, I've seen, I've had a lot of friends do and I think courses, there are definitely um, a ton of options uh, if you're looking at what you could take in the first year. Um, you have a wide variety of things to choose from. 
And then uh, in terms of uh, kind of law specific courses and, and streams, mm -hmm. can you speak a bit more to the types of uh, fields of law that are addressed uh, in the, the degree program at Carleton, the types of, uh, I guess, law courses? And and I know you talked a bit more about, you know, the political side of things being that we're here in, in Ottawa, but what, what other types of law can you look at? Oh gosh, there are so many. <laughs> um, <laughs> so you you'll definitely get an introduction into this when you take the first year course. But um, there are I'm trying to think of example. Um, sorry, I think my video is cutting in and out. I just didn't want you to miss it. But um, I've taken an environmental law course. There are quite a few courses in international law and there's actually a concentration in it. Again, I don't know the specific name, but there definitely is. Um, like I said, there were political sort of based ones. Um, there are a few different ones in practice you could so quite a few of them are based in theory but there are so also are ones such as the first year seminar um, where you're going to get very practical experience that you're going to be able to bring on into whatever field you go into um yeah there's uh, gosh like i could probably sit here naming so many but the ones that come to my head are business law um employment law i had quite a few friends that really love the employment law courses that you can take um into your uh, i believe it's third year now um there is environmental law which is one of my favorite courses um, a shortage of the types that you can take so uh don't be worried that this is going to be too narrow of a program because there's such a variety um, that you're definitely going to be able to find a place and a type of uh, law that you love. I love it. I'm going to bring uh, Steve back into the conversation, but Maisie, don't go too far because we're going to bring you back as well. Um, yeah. Because there are there are a couple of questions here that I hope um, Steve will be able to answer. Uh, sure. One was about uh, the difference between year three and year four uh, mm -hmm. in the program. Um, so maybe you can yeah. talk a bit more of uh, kind of the uh, the intention as students are building towards the end of their degree and specifically in those kind of two upper years. Yeah, yeah, that's um, <clears throat> OK. Well, I think the thing is, yeah, like there uh, if you're talking sort of about what would be the the advantages of doing like an honors degree versus like a pass uh, or a general degree. Um, I think that the difference, the big differences uh, between the two, well, there's a few differences. The first one is just general, actually, the size of the classes. They generally just tend to get uh, smaller as you move along, so and they get more specialized. So in your first year, the classes are, are fairly large, you know, um, it's all lecture style mainly. The second year, it's also usually lecture style, uh, you know, sometimes with discussion groups. Um, third year it's a bit smaller but often they those can be large as well by the fourth year though there there's their seminars so they are more of a chance to sort of dig in a little bit more into specific uh, questions so you know just to give you one example of like a pathway through courses like in first year you would talk about uh, you know in your first year course you would talk about like some elements of criminal law some basic elements in the second year you'd have the opportunity to sort of talk a little bit more about like the justice system or about like the intricacies of the criminal law like sort of basically tests within the criminal law or defenses or you know mitigating factors there's lots of different sort of more narrow things. By third year, you'd be sort of moving along. And by fourth year, you might have a whole course that just deals with sentencing. Uh, and so it's a kind of a, again, the fourth year, the, the, the jump between third and fourth year is fairly significant in terms of the material, just because, again, because the classes are so much smaller, you really have an opportunity to kind of dig into the material and actually to kind of have more of a voice in your classes because um, you're, you know, in a fourth year course is supposed to be uh, under 30 students, basically. So it, it's more of a opportunity for you to speak to that. So you you kind of fourth year provides you a, another opportunity to just become a little more specialized um, and to sort of flesh out your own ideas a little bit more. Yeah, that's how I think. I know. I'm glad. I'm glad you you read it that way because I, I, to be honest, read it completely differently. In, in <laughs> well, 
you know, the third year and a fourth year, not necessarily a three year and a four year program. And so just to kind of clarify for the for the, everyone listening um, at Carleton, you know, all of our programs are designed as uh, honors degrees. And, and that's where you typically find your kind of four year program if, if you're going to take the, the five credits a, a year approach. But there are some degrees like our Bachelor of Arts, for example, where you'll find the, the law program that will offer the a general option, which is more of a, a 15 credit or, or three year um, program. And so Steve you did a great job of explaining the difference when it relates to uh, the law program. Um, we, we, we also have a, a lot of different um, areas that do touch on kind of similar things. And, and criminology is a program that is um, a, a really great program at Carleton, and it does offer a law uh, specialization. And, and there was a question about, you know, looking at the two, the CRIM program and the law program. And if your your eye is towards, you know, police uh, work, uh, either as a detective or as a private investigator, uh, I don't know, maybe you, you might be biased or not. So <laughs> what would you tell a student who is looking at these two areas, like the, how would they best kind of handle their academic uh, approach if their intention is to eventually go into that kind of work? Yeah, I think it's a really, I think a lot of students are ha having to sort of figure that out. So I think it's a really good question. I would say, um, generally speaking, you know, they're, the criminology program, a lot of the courses that criminology students take are courses through the law program. So there's quite a bit of overlap between those two. I, in some ways, I would say that you, you know, there's certain advantages and disadvantages to both programs. I think, um, to be honest, in the first year, in the first couple of years, it's it's a little less, uh, it's, it's, it's not so crucial that you have to define what you want to be and then that you're locked into that choice indefinitely. I think that if you're interested in some of the other, the criminology program is largely made up of three sort of streams in terms of like sociology, law, and psychology. If you're interested in all those streams, then then you can kind of move through the CRIM program that way. And, and you, you, but if you're really primarily interested in law, uh, even in the criminal justice aspects of law, then uh, the law program provides you a little more range. You don't necessarily have to do psychology courses or whatever. So it, it's, it's um, the, you know, I think that there's a lot of opportunities kind of um, in the first couple of years to sort of see what you like. And the, you have the opportunity to, as a first year law student, you have the opportunity to take a first year criminology course and to see sort of what's available there through that. So so you, you have, um, you can sort of see what you like of both. But I think, you know, uh, one of the things I should say that uh, a lot of people like about the criminology program is they, they have a co-op option that's available for a select number of students in the upper years. And just so you know, the law, the law program also has a co-op option. It's a little less advertised and developed than the, um, the criminology one, but we, we've been working on it like um, kind of fairly aggressively the last couple of years. So there is that, there is that option as well. Just, yeah, so people know. And, and I'm glad you brought that up because there was a question about, you know, where students can end up working in co-op. And I, and I want to bring Maisie back in because of what we were talking earlier. But before I do, um, can you maybe talk a bit more about that? Like, do you, do you know um, where students end up working uh, with their co-op? Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, I can just say very quickly about it because uh, I, I, I'm on the committee that's dealing with it, but I think you know there's a uh, our, our one of a uh, couple of faculty are more involved than I am in, in the placements. But but there are kind of there are a lot of people that do uh, law um, law firm placements, but there are also people again that work in sort of social services like victim services and so on. In um, um, where those would be kind of the options, but um, you know right now we were looking to jump onto something that Maisie had mentioned earlier about employment law. One of the um, we're looking right now at trying to have some options within some unions uh, as well for sort of talk about like the legal aspects of uh, labor law, um, you know, and labor relations. So so those are some of the things that we do. Um, but the thing that the thing that's 
also important to say about our co-op option is that it actually empowers the students as well that if you have a particular place in mind where you think uh, you can kind of develop some of the issues and themes that you're interested in through the program you can kind of bring that to the um, uh, to the department and basically will kind of help you make that work awesome yeah. Awesome, thank you for answering that. And now uh, Macy's gonna come back on screen because uh, you know there was again a, a question about you know crim and, and law, and and Steve was referencing you know having the opportunity to to sample in that first year and those first first couple of years. So what was your I like to call it the Costco experience. So what was what was your Costco experience like uh, in your first couple of years at Carleton, trying to figure out and navigate you know which courses and and which uh, topics are really gonna speak uh, to you? Um, yeah, so honestly, I had a great experience. I was kind of worried that I wouldn't necessarily be able to attend courses that would let me um, figure out what I wanted to do. Because again, like I said, I knew I wanted to do law. I didn't think I wanted to be a lawyer, but I wasn't sure. Um, I had interest in such a huge amount of topics um, that I was worried that it wouldn't uh, kind of cover everything that I wanted, but it was actually an awesome experience. In my first year, I found that um, I learned stuff about myself and what I enjoyed. Um, that um, I would have never thought I would be interested in the type of work that I am now, um, like with support services um, in the community, if it wasn't for um, the classes that I got to take. And as I said, I took anything from, I'm trying to remember back to my first year, I took law, I took um, political science, I actually for three years have taken um, American Sign Language, so I've been learning a lot more of that. Um, and yeah, so it, I had an amazing experience. Uh, I got to learn so much. And now, Maisie, can you talk a bit more about um, being a student studying in the nation's capital? Because I think that's something that really, um, uh, I guess, plays into the, the advantages of studying at Carleton. And it's something that we really want our, our audience members, our future Ravens, to understand. So um, first, are you from Ottawa? Yes. Okay, <laughs> yes, okay no, awesome. That's, that's great. That's great. So you can really talk about hopefully what the city kind of means to you and also what it's meant to you as a student uh, in a, in a post-secondary setting. So maybe talk a bit about that. We call it the capital advantage, but maybe more of your just your personal auto experience. No, yeah, I'd love to talk about it. So um, honestly, uh, I really reflected on this recently because I've talked to some of um, my friends or people in my family that have taken legal programs, but in different parts of the country. And for me, what it meant to study in Ottawa was it meant um, a lot about making connections and being close to very, I don't want to use the word monumental, but <laughs> um, very foundational um, downtown we have a huge number of um, government organizations not only that but we have um, a lot of the courts that are here so being able to have that advantage um, I've seen tons of my friends in the program and colleagues um, be able to make connections and really um, learn about um, learn about the law firsthand um, I've gotten to work in the government in like a sort of legal-esque role before. Um, I know people who work in quite a few within a, a great piece of that. So I think the greatest advantage of being in Ottawa for me, as I see it, was um, being able to quite literally take a bus downtown and um, be able to learn even more about um, law in our city and then connect and make experiences with people firsthand because we are so close to buildings like the Parliament Hill and like these government ones and the courts and all of those sorts of things. So that's definitely been a great advantage of studying in Ottawa. 
Now we're getting towards the end of uh, tonight's event. It's been really great. And I mean, everyone's uh, all the attendees are still there, which really speaks to both you, Macy, and, and also uh, Steve and all the great stuff they've been sharing. So before uh, we kind of uh, put a bow on this event, uh, do you have, uh, Maisie, any kind of last words of wisdom for our future law students? Anything that you would like to uh, to share um, as, that they can take with them uh, throughout this application process? Um, for me, the biggest thing is um, be open to new experiences. I'm one of the most introverted people that a lot of my friends will meet, but the best experiences that I've had in this program extracurricular activities, meeting with professors and students that I wouldn't have normally done. So don't be afraid of trying new things. Um, that's definitely going to be where you have the best experiences when you come to Carleton. That is excellent advice and, and you've been a, a really great voice for uh, for our students. So I want to thank you for, for spending some time with us this evening. Um, I guess I will bring Steve back in and, and Steve, same question to you. Do you have any uh, words of wisdom for for your, your future students? Well, you should listen to everything that Maisie just said, actually, I would say. <laughs> I think I think she captured it really well. Um, yeah, I mean, just be open to the new experience. I mean, university, it's a really, you know, it's, it's a time for you to find your feet and um, you may not necessarily know how that's going to happen uh, when you first arrive, but, you know, be open to the new experiences and 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 get in touch with us because we genuinely, most of us anyway, want to want to make sure you get the best experience you can and and you know maximize your potential. So hopefully, I will see you soon. Love that. That was awesome. No, I I hope uh, everyone's feeling what I'm feeling right now. Just a really warm kind of sensation because it's been a really warm conversation. I feel like. Uh, you know, really got a good sense as to what not only law means at Carleton, but uh, what it means to be a member of the Carleton community. And I, and I really want to thank both Steve and Maisie for for showing, sharing their stories and for showcasing uh, the type of community that's waiting um, all of you. So I, I hope you uh, really enjoyed uh, tonight's session. Again, we'll stick around uh, for the next uh, 10 minutes or so to answer some of the questions you may have. Uh, on the uh, live event Q&A. Uh, I also should kind of, uh, I guess, shameless plug promo an event I'm having on Wednesday. It's the uh, Live at 5. It's been a, a reoccurring series we've been having every Wednesday at 5 p.m. Eastern time. where We've been talking about, you know, different uh, parts of your Carlton journey, whether it be scholarships, residence, uh, co-op and careers, uh, 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 athletics, and so on. And so what we're going to be doing on Wednesday is uh, hopefully answer as many questions that you may have about the application process as possible. So definitely check that out on Microsoft Teams. Uh, and again, that's the Live at 5, Wednesday, 5 p.m. Eastern time. And then next week, we're starting a pretty cool week of virtual events. And I, I want to mention uh, a specific event that we're doing uh, centered around your career, your future. And uh, there have been a lot of conversations on, in the Q&A and tonight about you know, jobs and what type of jobs can you get with law and, and where are the different kind of fields that are available both in the city and outside. And, and uh, this presentation we're going to be hosting next week is going to give you some uh, a sense as to why the Carlton kind of skills that you're going to be acquiring are going to serve you really well in your own job search and, your, and as you pa uh, carve your own path towards your future career. So uh, we're going to post that onto our website, um, all the information you need to know uh, about um, how to access that presentation, uh, but it's going to be a really cool one. So definitely check that out. OK, I, I think I've talked too much, but hopefully it was uh, valuable information. Uh, we look forward to seeing you all again, uh, hopefully uh, on campus next year, but certainly virtually uh, before too long. And if this is our last time checking in in 2020, I want to wish you all a very happy holidays. Uh, all the best for the year 2021. Hopefully a more positive, uh, more healthy the year for all of us involved. So um, best of luck and we will see you soon.